Hello all, today I'm reviewing the Easy 3 X1 3D printer. Keep in mind this is my first 3D printer. If you're also new to 3D printing, this might be the video for you. I planned on getting one for years but could never justify the cost. Then came this, the cheapest 3D printer ever. It was $139 with free shipping from Australia. It arrived within a week. Here we have 1.75mm PLA filament. Small packs like these are normally used with 3D pens. Note this printer is only compatible with PLA or PLA Plus filament, not ABS or other types. Next we have the power cord. This pack includes some foam pads, a screwdriver, bolts and nuts for assembly, an SD card and a USB to SD adapter. This is how you will transfer 3D files from your computer to the printer. Next we have a filament holder bracket, a USB cable, the other part of the filament holder, some very basic user instructions, There are three main parts, the top, the base and the control box. The ports are DC jack, USB port and an SD card slot. The buttons are home which is used for levelling the bed, filament feed reverse, filament feed forward, start or pause button. Here's the extruder. It has a heating element and a stepper motor which is used to feed the filament. It also has two fans, one to cool the stepper motor and one that blows directly on the nozzle and print job. Here's a quick look at the internals. At a later date, if I choose to modify the printer, I might upgrade it to an Arduino with a 3D printer shield. Okay, let's assemble it. Make sure to route that cable correctly and secure the top with the bolts and nuts provided. Here you can see the three axes. You might recognise these kind of belts from inkjet printers. The filament holder can go on either way as long as the roll doesn't interfere with the bed. Once you're done with the assembly it's time for a test print. Try something small first. There is a cat file on the USB or you can browse one of the many 3D objects on the internet. This one is tinkercad.com. It has a large selection of objects as well as tutorials and basic but useful CAD software. A lot of these are 3D designs and not necessarily 3D printing objects. You can type in a keyword and search for a particular kind of object. Note items over 10 centimeters may require shrinking or cutting in CAD software. Also objects with moving parts may need to be modified or adjusted to work with this 3D printer. Next we have the browser based Tinkercad software. It has a lot of objects to work with. You can place an object and adjust its dimensions. Shapes can be either a solid or a hole. If you overlay a whole object over a solid and group them, you'll have a cutaway like this. You can also group solid objects together to make one larger object. You're basically adding, subtracting and transforming shapes to sculpt an object. When you're done creating your object, you can export it in SDL format. We'll talk more about Tinkercad later, but for now that object needs to be sliced for 3D printing. 
The slicer software that comes with the printer is EasyWare. With it, if necessary, you can transform and move and scale the object. Once you're done with that, you can click on one key. Usually you'll click on Optimize. You can also click on Custom and change options like Support Type and Fill Density. For example, some mechanical parts might need the strength of solid plastic rather than hollow cord. As you can see, the slicer calculates one slice at a time. Most 3D printers print from the bottom upwards. This printer doesn't have a heated bed, so the raft at the bottom is very important. Once you're done with that, you can click Save to SD card. Make sure if you have a previous file on the SD card, you delete it, otherwise you might print the wrong one. When that's done, safely eject the SD card and put it in the 3D printer. Before you start printing, we need to level it. Press the Home button. The extruder will go to one corner and stop. Unplug the power, check the gap between the clean nozzle and the bed with a sheet of paper. Carefully slide the extruder to each corner and adjust as necessary. Once you've got the bed adjusted, you can insert the filament. Then press the plus button. After a little while when it warms up, you can help by pushing the filament through. When that's done, you can press the plus button again to stop the feeder and then press the start button. Here I'm having issues with the filament. Normally you'd see some come out and stick to the bed. It will begin by printing a raft first. The first thing I printed was a Minecraft fox. I downloaded it from the internet and scaled it down so it would print faster. The part under the chin is a support. It's a latticework frame that can be removed with pliers. Supports aren't always needed, as you can see in the middle of the fox's body. This would also be the case for gear teeth and bolt threads, but you won't be printing large areas over nothing. Each layer needs to be partially over another one. That's the fox done. The print bed is magnetic. You might find it easier to take it off before you remove the part. Now I prefer to leave it on there and use an artist palette knife to separate the item. Later I downloaded and printed multiple Lego brick files. Unfortunately none of them worked out. The outer dimensions were generally correct, but the walls were too thick. Here the blue one is a commercial block. The white one plugs into it, but not the other way around. The grey one I tried printing upside down, but that was even worse. I'm hoping it's something like one simple wall thickness setting. I'll have to revisit these on a later date. I also tried printing some items with multiple moving parts, as well as print in place hinges without success. The tolerances were just too tight. I don't know whether it's the filament, the printer, or the EasyWear software. Again, it's something I'll have to figure out and come back to later. Now back to the fantastic Tinkercad I introduced earlier. I've used it to alter or create a few parts which I could tweak to about 0.2mm accuracy. The first one adapts a skateboard bearing to 25mm height. Four of these becomes my filament roller. Here I have a 1kg roll of PLA filament. If you want to print a large 3D object, you need the filament to be able to spool without tangling or getting caught. I used some 10cm pieces of 25mm plumbing pipe, two pieces of aluminium composite, four bearing adapters, four skateboard bearings, four 3D printed washers and two M8 bolts. Next I designed a radio controlled car wheel. It's only a rough prototype but it does fit the tyre. Just shows you can make working parts. Next we've got an actual repair. This is a clip from a chest mount phone holder. It broke the third time it was used. Super glue won't cut it. It's a spring clip so it just breaks again. 
first I glued it together, then I lined up the foam perfectly square and got a good photo. I loaded that photo in GIMP and cut everything away that wasn't supposed to be there. Next I transferred it to Inkscape and created two layers with the basic shape. With that done I imported it into Tinkercad. Then went to work with a ruler and a caliper and made sure everything was just right. It's not quite as pretty or as symmetrical as the original, but I'm happy with that. Now time to export it as an STL file. For the last step we load it into Easyware, slice it and save it to the SD card. Sometime later we've got our print. This took me three attempts. The first one I forgot the bottom slot, then I had a fitment issue and I had to make some small adjustments. Not the easiest thing in the world but very rewarding. The best part is the clip is stronger than the original and if it does break I can simply print another one. So far we've had some good results from items I've made myself but not necessarily ones I've downloaded. These are problems I can work around by changing things or even printing them slightly larger as with this toy catapult. But then I ran into problems. The one on the left let go from the bed overnight. The next morning I found it like that and had to remove melted plastic from around the extruder. This phone holder printed with a curved base. I'm not sure if there is a bed level problem or if its edges let go. I'm guessing this is a problem unique to 3D printers that don't have a heated bed. Another issue is the raft is sticking to some objects and it's difficult to remove. I'm hoping it could be a simple issue with Easyware. Perhaps I need to exit and restart it after doing custom slices. One temporary solution is pausing the print soon after the raft is printed and quickly putting some hot melt glue on the corners. Just be aware it will mess up the bed. It's very difficult to remove the hot melt glue. I believe it's a temperature problem and needs a heated bed or an enclosure at the very least. So a few issues there for me, including problems with the filament feed at the start of prints. Before we conclude this video, we'll have a quick look at their Easy3 website. They have their own instructional videos, which are a must watch. There's a support section with user manuals and software downloads. They've got a large models library. Note some of these won't print on the X1 because it's only got a 10 centimeter bed. There's a very useful message board where you can ask questions. I've already found solutions to problems on there. In conclusion, is it worth the $139? If you can't justify spending more money, I say it's okay. But if you can afford a better one, then definitely look elsewhere. Well that's my review, based on my personal experience. The problems I had could be as simple as the weather being too cool. Make sure to subscribe and look out for future videos about this printer. Thanks for watching.